Gee whiz. Hello, friends. Welcome to this series of old-time radio show episodes called Gee Whiz. These are the stories of the schemes, trials, and loves of the typical American teenagers, Andy Hardy, Archie Andrews, and Henry Aldridge. Henry Aldridge was first played by Ezra Stone on the radio, but on the big screen, he was first played by Jackie Cooper, including the 1941 film, Life with Henry. Come on, you out there, Father? Yes. <laughs> Henry, what are you doing in the kitchen at 2 o'clock in the morning? I'm reading a cookbook. Reading a cookbook? Yeah, I'm trying to find out how to make soap. Here's an episode of The Aldrich Family from February 10th, 1949. Yes, it's The Aldrich Family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Telk as home. And yes, it's The Jell-O Family with its three famous desserts. Jell-O in those six delicious flavors, regular Jell-O puddings with that old-fashioned homemade flavor, and Jell-O tapioca puddings. A miracle of goodness... A marvel of speed. Everyone's a jello good fellow, a very good jello good fellow. So rich, so tempting and mellow. J-E-L-L-O. And now for the Aldrich family. One seventeen Elm Street, Centerville, is your own house, or the house on the next block, or that house right around the corner in your memories. And the important person in and out of it is always a typical teenage boy like Henry Aldrich. The scene opens at the Aldrich breakfast table. It is Saturday morning. Oh, well, Esther, we have to now, Sam. It started out to be such a nice day. The air is brisk. The sun is shining. Why ruin it by discussing Henry's report card? But, dear, have you seen it? I signed it. But have you seen it? You don't think I signed Henry's report card with my eyes closed, do you? Yes. How, oh, Alice? If you'd looked at it, you'd certainly be more upset. And I'm sure we ought to have his basal metabolism taken. As what? His basal metabolism, Sam. It's at the bottom of a lot of things these days. <laughs> Not report cards. Alice, there's nothing wrong with Henry that some hard work won't cure. He's just got to learn to stop procrastinating and buckle down. That's right, dear, and I think you should speak to him about it. Yes, Alice, I will. Tomorrow. Why can't you do it today? Alice, the sun is shining, the air is brisk, and it's Saturday, Henry's day of rest. Sam Aldridge, if you ask me, you could do with a little buckling down yourself. Henry? Yes, Mother? Come in here, please. Alice. And, dear, if he has any homework, I think he should do it right now. You were calling I, Mother? Yes, dear. Your father has something to say to you. He has? Oh, boy. Now, I'll answer the phone. Yes, Father? Henry. Henry, what I want to say is... Yes, sir? What I want to say... Father, if it's going out of your head, I don't mind dropping the whole thing until it comes back. I haven't forgotten, Henry. Sit down. Sit down? But, Father... Henry. Yes, Father, I'm sad. I mean, sad. Oh, they're seated. Henry, your mother and I have just been discussing your report card. You have? On a nice day like this? I had the same reaction. Henry, don't you think it's about time you buckled down and started to worry about your schoolwork? Gee, I do worry about it, Father. You do? I give you my word, there's nothing I worry about more. I'm glad to hear that. But I'd be glad to do a little extra worrying, if it would ease your mind. That's very cooperative of you, Henry, but there's one method we ought to try first. There is? What? Work. Work? Yes. Father, when you say work, how do you mean that? Just the way it sounds. Good, hard, industrious effort. Oh. I want you to buckle down and really put your mind to your study. Yes, sir. Now, what homework do you have this weekend? This weekend? Oh, gee, that's a wonderful part, Father. I practically don't have any at all. None at all? Well, just a few simple geometry problems. And gee whiz, I can knock those off in five minutes. Good. Suppose you take five minutes right now and start knocking. Yeah, what? What? <laughs> But, Father, when I said five minutes, I was thinking of five minutes Monday morning when my brain will have a whole weekend's rest. Henry, your mother and I have taken all the procrastinating we're going to. You're not to leave the house until your geometry is done. But, Father... Is that clear? Yes, sir. Sam, could I speak to you out here in 
the hall. Yes, Alice. Now get to work, Henry. Yes, Father. But I'm really much better at homework on Monday morning. Sam, you didn't tell him to do his homework now, did you? Yes, why? That was Homer on the phone, and I'm afraid we've made a terrible mistake. In what way? He's on his way over here. Alice, I'm afraid that's a mistake we can no longer avoid. Dear, you don't understand. We didn't realize that the boys have a date to go ice skating with Kathleen and Agnes. So wouldn't it be just as well if he did his homework Sunday evening? Alice, after I ordered him to do it now? But, Sam, this is Saturday, his day of rest. <sighs> Suppose I do this, Alice. Suppose I help him. You will? Well, that might help. But nevertheless, dear, I'm certainly going to write a note to Mr. Bradley. And his principal, why? Sam, they have no right to ruin a boy's entire weekend this way. Especially on the last good ice skating day of the year. Oh, will you answer that, dear? I'm on the stove. Hello. Hello, Sam. This is Will Brown. Yes, Will. Sam, I just looked outdoors, and it's a wonderful day. Yes, isn't it? The sun is shining. There's that old stamp in the air. And I thought, why stay cooped up in the house? Why not call good old Sam and spend the afternoon bowling? Bowling? Why not? You mean, why be cooped up in the house when you can be cooped up in the bowling alley? But, Sam, I have to get out of the house. Elizabeth's trying to get me to shellac the dining room floor. Shellac it? Sure. That's her favorite indoor sport, trying to get me to shellac. So what do you say? Aren't you in the mood to bowl, Sam? Oh, I'm in the mood, all right. Good. Then suppose you pick me up right away. Well, I'll tell you, there's a, a little matter I have to clean up first. Oh, you mean Alice has stuck you with some job? No, no, no. It's just, uh, just, uh, Will, it's nothing I can't finish in five minutes. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. So long, Sam. Goodbye, Will. Henry! I'm in the dining room, Father, buckling down on my homework. Good. Father, Mother told me about your helping me, and boy, I certainly appreciate That's it. That's quite all right. Now, let's get started. Hey, Henry. Hey. Sounds like Homer. Doesn't sound like anyone else. Hi, Henry. Hi, Mr. Aldrich. Boy, what a day. What a day. <laughs> Homer. Is that an apple in that fruit bowl? Homer, don't bite it. It's wax. It is. Boy, what a day. Come on, Henry, let's go. Let's go? Sure, are we meeting the girls at 12? Well, first, Homer, there's a little matter my father and I have to get out of the way. What little matter? My geometry homework. You're going to do that now? What do you do Monday during lunch? Oh, by the fewer interruptions we have, the quicker we'll finish. So would you please sit quietly in the corner? Yes, sir. Now, Henry. Henry, did I tell you about that trick Agnes and I worked out? Uh, Homer, if... Uh... We're skating along gracefully, see? And then all of a sudden, she grabs me by the wrist and throws me over her shoulder. Homer, I... Uh... And when I come down there, she is to grab me again. Homer! Yes, Mr. Aldrich. I'll shut up. <laughs> Good. Now... Is that banana wax, too? It is. <laughs> oh. The pear, too? Homer, I'm sure Mrs. Ulrich must have something edible in the kitchen. Yes, sir. You don't mind my leaving? Not a bit. You won't be long, will you, Henry? No, gee, if we buckle down, we'll be through in no time. Henry, how many problems have you done so far? How many? Well, there's one in particular I'm sort of stuck on. Which one? The first. <laughs> I see. Well, let's get to work on it. Yes, sir. Uh, just as soon as I get this lampshade fixed. What's wrong with it? Well, gee whiz, did you ever notice how it tilts? Boy, you can hardly concentrate. Excuse me. Where are you going? To get a pair of pliers so we can work with a free mind. Henry, sit down. Yes. You'll never get anywhere if you keep on procrastinating. Yes. Now, what's the problem you're stuck on? Um, Farmer Gray has a field that is 900 feet on one side, 800 feet on the parallel side, and the remaining sides are 100 feet each. If the field is in the shape of a tra trapezoid, what is the area? Henry, that can't be right. But, but I copied it right off the blackboard, Father. The field is in the shape of a what? Trapezoid. Oh. Oh, trapezoid. Well, that shouldn't be hard. Um, do you have your pencil, Henry? Yes, sir. And your ruler and your paper? Yes, sir. All right, then, Henry. Now, first tell me, what is a trapezoid? <laughs> what is it? Well, Henry, you can't expect to find the area unless you know what it is. But, f Father, that's the whole thing. I, I don't even remember Miss Bennett ever even mentioning trapezoids. Hey, Ken, do 
either of you have a nutcracker on you? <laughs> a nutcracker? All your mother had to eat that wasn't in a can were these walnuts. Homer, you'll find my hammer in the basement. Yes, sir. Henry, do you think you'll be through by the time I'm all cracked? <laughs> Homer, just run along. Yes, Mr. Aldrich, I'll leave you alone. Let's hurry, Henry. Suppose you look up Trapezoid. Where's your math book? Why, in my lunchbox. You're having it for lunch? No, sir, I, I put it in there so I'd be sure not to forget to bring the book home from school. Well, please get it. Well, that's just it. I forgot my lunchbox. <laughs> you don't have a book at all? No, sir. So couldn't you just tell me what a trapezoid is? A trapezoid, of course. Uh, now, as I remember it, uh, a trapezoid is a... A trapezoid is a sort of... Uh... Yes, Father? Henry, you'll never learn by my telling you. The thing for you to do is look it up. <laughs> but where, Father? Doesn't Homer have a geometry book? Sure, but it's probably in his house. Well, ask him to get it. But, Father... And please hurry, Henry. A certain gentleman is waiting for me on a very urgent matter. <laughs> Hello? Elizabeth, this is Alice. Oh, hello, Alice. Elizabeth, I'm writing a letter to Mr. Bradley, and I wondered if you'd be interested in signing it, too. What sort of a letter, Alice? About the amount of homework they give the boys. I say, dear Mr. Bradley, as one of your mothers, I'm deeply concerned about my son's weekend. Henry has homework over the weekend? Yes. Well, isn't Homer lucky? He never has any. But aren't he and Henry in the same class? That's true, they are. He must have homework. I should think so. You know what Homer's trouble is he takes after Will, always putting things off. He does? Alice, I'd hate to tell you how long I've been after Will to shellac my dining room floor. I asked him this morning, and he said he's going bowling with Sam. Sam? Sam's going bowling? Isn't he? Well, right now he's working on a trapezoid with Henry. You don't say... Well, Elizabeth. Oh, my goodness, it's Will. I'd better hang up before he gets away. All right. Goodbye, Elizabeth. Goodbye. Will, I'd like to speak to you. Elizabeth, have you seen my bowling shoes? Your bowling shoes? They're in my broom closet. Well, what are they doing there? They're so comfortable to do housework in. Elizabeth. And anyway, Will Brown, you won't need them. Why not? If Sam Aldridge can fix Alice's trapezoid, you can <laughs> fill out my foot. Fix her what? Oh, don't stand around asking questions. Suppose you start. But, Elizabeth, it's too humid to shellac. You used the same excuse in July. But, Elizabeth... I... Will Brown, how would you like to have sweetbreads for dinner every day from now on? Sweetbreads? Elizabeth... Well, you're going to get them if that floor isn't done today. But Sam will be here any minute. Mother. Elizabeth! Mother, have you seen my geometry book anywhere? Where did you put it? I don't remember. I always put things like that right out of my mind as soon as I get home on Friday. Well, I, I haven't seen it. And Homer... Oh, there it is on the hall table. Excuse uh, me. Wait a minute, Homer. Didn't you promise to help me select the dining room floor? Sure. When the time came that you couldn't get out of it. Well, the time has come. <laughs> well, get the brushes and let's start. But father... Homer, start shellacking and shut up. <laughs> Henry, go back and look through that encyclopedia again. Gee whiz, Father, I did four times, and I give you my word, trapezoid's nowhere in there. Henry, it must be. Everything's in the encyclopedia. But it isn't. It goes from trapani to trap shooting. Oh, I know. Remember when little cousin Bertram visited us last summer? What about him? Boy, if there was one thing he liked to do, it was cut pictures out of books. You suppose he took trapezoids with him? That's a fine thing. Let me at that phone. Father, who are you calling? Mr. Query, my accountant. And find out once and for all what a trapezoid is. Number two. Uh, Elm, uh, 494. Elm, Do you think Mr. Query can help us? If he can't, no one can. I've never seen anyone who could do the things with figures that he can. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Query. This is Mr. Aldrich. Why, hello, Mr. Aldrich. I've been trying to get you all week. Every time I call your office, you're in conference. Uh, yes. We I don't know. have too much time left to get your books in order. Uh, yes, I know, and I'm very anxious to have them out of the way, naturally. You but... are good. Well, I'll be right over. What? All I have to do is get your books together and sharpen my pencil. But, Mr. Cleary... I don't usually work on Saturdays, but if we buckle down, we should be through in two or three hours. Two or three? Goodbye. Uh, Mr. Cleary, come back. Mr. Cleary, I don't have time to. Mr. Cleary, I'm in conference. <laughs> 
Homer, that's the oldest mistake in the world. But, Father, I thought you were leaving room down at your end for us to get out. You thought I was leaving. <laughs> now we're stuck in the middle of the dining room floor, surrounded by wet shellac. Oh. Elizabeth! Well, do you have to shout all up? Well, wouldn't you know it? Elizabeth, let's be constructive. Get us out of here. Dear, I'm afraid you'll have to stay there until the shellac dries. What? What? And while you're there, Homer, here, catch. Oops. If Henry can do his homework, you can do yours. But, Elizabeth, what about me? You can help Homer. Help Homer? Father, gee whiz, Mother, have a heart. <laughs> Do you see it, Henry? Could you boost me higher, Father? There. Is it on that top shelf? No, Father. Well, that's a fine thing. I was positive I saw it out here in the garage. Oh, gee whiz, Father. What good is a mechanic's handbook at a time like this? It might cover trapezoids. But, Father, do you realize it's past 12? I realize it, Henry. I realize it very well. And we're not going to waste any more time. What's the name of your math teacher? Miss Bennett. Why? We're going straight over to her house and ask for help. Miss Bennett? Do you think that's why? Why? I mean, asking her to see me on a weekend, considering what she goes through all week. Henry, come along. Oh, back in the garage, Henry. Quick. Mr. Aldridge. Father, what's wrong? Sam, are you out that's there Mr. in Cliff. back? If he gets his hands on me, I'll be trapped for the rest of the day. Henry, get behind the car. Sam! Mr. Aldridge! Henry. Keep down. Sam! I'm afraid he isn't out here, Mr. Cleary. Well, that's strange. He told me he was very anxious to get those books audited. Mr. Cleary, you don't suppose he meant for you to meet him at his office, do you? You think so? Well, perhaps you ought to drive down there. Perhaps I'd better. Uh, let me close those garage doors for you. Mr. Cleary, you didn't snap the padlock, did you? Yes. Why? Well, it's just that the lock's gotten terribly rusty, and Mr. Aldrich keeps putting off oiling it. One of these days, we're not going to be able to get it open at all. Hello? Elizabeth, this is Alice. Is Will there? Why, yes, Alice, only... Could you send him over to our house right away? But he's still in the middle of his shellac. What? Alice, what's wrong? Our car seems to have a short circuit in the horn. It just keeps blowing and blowing. Oh, my. And it's locked in the garage and Sam's disappeared. Alice, Gus is here now. I'll send him over. Would you? Thank you, Elizabeth. Goodbye. Goodbye. Gus? Oh, Gus. Yeah? Could you go over to the Aldridge's? Their car horn is stuck and the garage door is locked. Oh, sure thing. Goodbye, Gus. Mother. Homer. How did you get out of the dining room? Mother, never mind me. It's Father. What happened? We were standing there in the middle of the room, see, and Father said he couldn't stand being cooped up with me and Trapezoid's boat, so he did it. Did what? He tried to jump from the middle of the dining room to the living room doorway. Oh, dear. And you know what happened? Of course. He didn't make it. Mother, that isn't the point. He was carrying his pot of shellac when he jumped. <laughs> Henry, do you see Miss Bennett anywhere on the ice? Not yet, Father, but I'm keeping my eyes open. Are you still upset? Henry, I'd rather not discuss it. Yes, sir. But you'd think Gus could have gotten us out of the garage without breaking down the door with an axe. <laughs> Henry, what does Miss Bennett look like? Gee, you can't miss her. She's sort of... Well, gee, she's very healthy. Healthy? How? Why, in a big way. I see. Henry Aldrich! Oh, boy. Kathleen! So you finally showed up! Realize it's nearly three o'clock? Uh, Kathleen, let me explain. That's not necessary. And it might interest you to know that Agnes and I had a wonderful time skating with Charlie Claw. Charlie? Yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going over to see if Charlie's resting comfortably. Something happened to him? Agnes threw him over her shoulder, and she wasn't there when he came down. <laughs> Kathleen, listen. Goodbye, Henry Aldrich. But Kathleen... Never mind, Kathleen, Henry. Look over there. Is that Miss Bennett? Where? Well, gee whiz. Father, do you think a math teacher should go around in public doing figure eights? Is that what she's doing? She's trying to. Miss Bennett? Oh, Miss Bennett! Miss Bennett! Oh, God. I'm Miss Bennett. Henry Aldridge, could I please speak to you? Oh, stop me, Henry. Stop me. Father, quick! I got you. 
Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you very much. Isn't this fun? Um, <laughs> Miss Bennett. Henry, don't let go of my elbow. I'm not too steady. Uh, Miss Bennett, I'm Henry's father. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Alden? Uh, Would you believe it? I haven't been on skates in ten years. You haven't? Uh, Miss Bennett, we have a problem. Yes. Uh, that is, Henry has a problem. Uh, that is, uh, well, I know it isn't ethical, but we're sort of stuck on that trapezoid. Uh, trapezoid? What, uh, what trapezoid? The one that's our homework for Monday. Henry, did I give a problem about trapezoid? Gee whiz, <laughs> sure, you wrote it on the blackboard. I did? I haven't taken up trapezoids with the class yet. <laughs> what? Well, she hasn't taken it up. Oh, boy. I meant to get into them this past week, but somehow I just put it off and put it off. Miss Bennett, do you mean to say... Do you mean to say... Mr. Aldrich, you're letting go of my arm. Father! Ah! Miss Bennett! Oh! Sam? Yes, Alice? Are you all right on the couch? I'm fine. Is that easy chair comfortable, Henry? <sighs> yes, Mother. Would either of you like another blanket? No, thank you. No, thanks, Mother. Well, I just want you both to know I think it was a very brave thing to do. Brave? Yes, pulling Miss Bennett out of the water like that. We didn't do it to be brave. Miss Bennett was holding on to us for dear life. We rescued her in self-defense. Dear, I know better. Father, are you really going to take me out of school if Miss Bennett stays at Central High? I haven't decided. Sam, don't you think you ought to cool off first? Alice, I'm as cooled off as I'll ever be. Incidentally, Sam, did you find out what a trapezoid is? Uh, yes, Alice, a trapezoid is a... A trapezoid, a... Uh, well, Alice, do you see that lampshade over the dining room table? The one that sort of tilts? Yes, that's a perfect example of a trapezoid. You know, Father, it just occurred to me. It's been hanging over our heads all day. Hey, Henry. In here, Homer. Well, I'll get the phone. Hi, Henry. Timer. Here's my geometry book. Boy, Homer, you sure took your time. I couldn't help it. My father and I just got through cleaning off the wall. The wall? Boy, you should have seen the way his can splashed when it landed. <laughs> hey, Homer. Homer, what's this all over your book? Shellac. What? If you think that's in bad shape, you ought to see my father. My mother says it's the first time in his life he got his hair to stay down. <laughs> Cleary on the phone. Cleary? Yes, he called to say you weren't at the office either. Alice, what did you tell him? I told him you were flat on your back. Oh, good. So he said not to let you up. He'd be right over with the book. What? Alice! Here's hoping you'll be in your living room in hours next week at the same time. Good night, folks. Starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. It's written by Norman Tilcar and Ed Jurist with music by Jack Miller. Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich are House Jameson and Catherine Roth. That was the Aldrich family from 1949. And now an episode featuring Andy Hardy. It's a radio preview of an Andy Hardy movie featuring a new love interest played by Donna Reed. She was best known for playing George Bailey's wife, Mary, in It's a Wonderful Life. But this is before that, in 1942, The Courtship of Andy Hardy. Leo is on the air. This is your Hollywood radio reporter, coming to you from the little theater at the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios, bringing you The Courtship of Andy Hardy, with Mickey Rooney, Louis Stone, and the Hardy family's guest player, Miss Donna Reed. A few months ago, the students of a Southern California college elected Donna Reed their queen of the campus. Donna had been an Iowa farm girl, working her way through school, nourishing the hope that someday... 
She'd graduate and find a job as a private secretary. Donna had dreamed a lot about that job. She had laid her plans carefully, and then along came fate and Hollywood. The rest of Donna's story is as brief as it is fantastic. A newspaper photograph of the campus first lady, an enthusiastic talent scout, hurried arrangements for a screen test, and before Donna Reed had recovered from the first thrill, she found herself already launched on a screen career. Today, the little Iowa farm girl has realized the ambition of every young actress in Hollywood, the guest player part in a hearty family picture, the same opportunity that has already lifted other young players to stardom, among them Judy Garland, Lana Turner, Anne Rutherford, and Patricia Dane. Donna plays the part of Melody Nesbitt in the courtship of Andy Hardy. Our first scene opens in Judge Hardy's study. Andy and the judge are in the midst of one of their man-to-man talks. Listen. Uh, what I want to know at this moment is, how is your... your... well, I... I suppose you youngsters would call it your love life. Yes, I would call it that, but gee, Daddy, you have to use that kind of language. I'm the father and you're the son, aren't we? That's right. I don't know why I should be embarrassed about this thing. What I want to know at this particular moment is, is there a girl... You mean if I drizzle down to one particular cookie? No, Dad. No, thank you. I'm playing the field. Apparently, that means there is no girl. <laughs> I'm going out of the retail business and going in for the wholesale trade. Uh, you know, safety in numbers, variety is the spice of life. Why worry about one girl when there are hundreds of them? No, Dad, I, I made a mistake once, but I I know now. Why, why, a fellow goes around with a girl steady for a couple of days, and right away he begins to think, gee, she must have invented women. And that's bad for a fellow my age because it's most liable to lead to love. You don't believe in love? Love. <laughs> Going around with a stomach ache because somebody didn't have the right expression on their face when you said goodnight to them. Fine, fine. That fits in with my plans perfectly. Do you know Melody Nesbitt? Young Melody Nesbitt, sure, sure. She's just a child, not more than 16 or 17. Uh, what kind of a girl is she? I wouldn't know, only that she's a little droopy. Droopy? Well, I always thought she was rather pretty. I never noticed. Her face doesn't do anything for her. Clothes don't do anything for her. She certainly doesn't do anything for herself. Or don't you understand that? I think I do. You mean that she's not uh, dizzy? Well, she's sort of a sad apple, a barb. What? A barb. A barbarian. She'd rather stay home and listen to a bunch of opera records than go out and do a little polite smooching. Do you think you could martyr yourself and give her a whirl? A whirl? Dad, I don't mean to be critical, but that sounds a little vulgar. Oh, it simply means be nice to the girl, take her to a dance or something. Dad, please, would you never use those expressions like spooning or a whirl or bundling, where anybody can hear you because it dates you. Bundling? Well, Andrew, I do not go back to the American Revolution. Now, what about Melody? All right, Dad, if the occasion requires a female companion, why, I'll buy her a ticket on the merry-go-round. But don't get me wrong. From now on, if I date one girl more than twice, you can make up your mind that I'm going to marry her. I will remember that. Thanks, Andy. Say, Dad, why all this sudden interest in Melody Nesbitt? Well, why shouldn't I be frank? Andrew, have you any real idea what happens to children when a family breaks up? No, I guess not. Except I guess it's awkward for the kids. Huh? Awkward, Andrew? I often it crucifies them. That's why Melody Nesbitt is a droop. I'm hopeful of setting the stage to give some sort of an incentive for her to have a happy, normal life. And I'd be very grateful to you for providing the opportunity. Gee, Dad. If I'm growing up, most of all, I appreciate you talking to me frankly like this. Mm. Asking me to help you. I sure I'll, I'll show her a good time if I bust a rib. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, thanks. But I don't want her to know that this is a... A frame-up? Mm -hmm. No, she won't. I had a wonderful time, Andrew. <laughs> That's swell. I like dances now. Well, that's the way with social life. Once you get a taste of it, you can't do without it. You know, I never saw any point in being popular before. I guess it's something you have to work on. 
Well, girls have to work plenty hard to be popular with the boys, but look at their reward. <laughs> yeah, I can see that now. Andrew, what makes a girl attractive? Oh, oh lots of things. Such as what? Uh, sit down a minute and tell me. Well, uh, first of all, they, uh, they have to want to be attractive, and then they have to have poise. Oh, yes, of course. She has to want to be attractive. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, I've got to be going. <laughs> I've got to get up early in the morning, you know, my job at Dugan's Garage. Andy, you've had a perfectly miserable evening. But really, I don't care if you did because... Oh, excuse me, I thought you were Polly Benedict for a minute. I... <clears throat> I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. You didn't. Good night. <laughs> Andy, that was swell of you, giving up a whole evening to entertain a, a droop just because your dad asked you to. And it was nice of you to give her those little pointers on, on poise and how to make herself attractive. Of course, Melody doesn't want to be a wallflower. And if she'll take to heart the things you've told her, why, well, you and the rest of the boys are in for a big surprise. The scene changes now to the Hardy dining room. It's dinner time, Friday evening, two weeks later. All ready. Good evening, Andrew. If you wash your hands and face, somebody call Marion, please. James, this is the finest meal I've ever cooked. Emily wouldn't even let me mash the potatoes for fear they wouldn't be exactly the way Marion likes them. Well, I'm sentimental. The whole family's together again. Well, Andy, one thick or two thins? Better make it two thicks. I've got to bolster up my tissues. Tonight's the spinster skip. I suppose you've been stampeded with invitations. No, the only bid that I got was the one that you brought me. I was framed. The women ganged up on me and Melody hooked me. As painful as it is, you'd rather go with her than not go at all. I'd rather not go at all, period. But I couldn't say no because I wanted to help you out. I'd be glad to see Melody. She going to call for you here? No, no, I've arranged to meet her at the dance. I didn't want to cause her any embarrassment. You sure not to save your own embarrassment? Look, Dad... With the agony that I'm going to have to go through tonight, a little minor emotion like embarrassment would be a pleasure. Now, wait just a minute, fellas. You've got Melody all wrong. She's not genuinely gruesome. She's just a little different, that's all. A lot different than I'd date. Now, look, for my sake, I, I promised the kid to have a good time. So, would you mind breaking it just once? Oh, no, 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 no. Are you gentlemen or cads? Cads. I'm, I'm your pal. Really, Frank. Holy mackerel. Hardy, do you see what I see? Melody. Hi, you moose. What's cooking? Oh, fellas, this is the most sensational thing since Nero burned Rome. It's terrific. Oh, it's bigger and better than Boulder Dam. I, I hardly recognize you. You've changed. Well, you dogs, Melody's really going to be the belle of the ball this time. Hi, you gorgeous. <laughs> Let's put the show on the road, huh? Hi, Andy. Hi, Melody. Everything coming? Right bang on the nose, baby. Cynthia's a stunning girl, isn't she? Well, she's a smart girl, you know. She knows what most women won't learn. That a black dress can be awful simple, but it gives out to the men. <laughs> Shall we uh, trip the light fantastic? <laughs> You didn't mind leaving a little early. No, not at all. The only thing was that you had a couple more dances booked up. Yeah, with the wolves. Not with you. Why, Andrew? Didn't I have poise? Yes. You had sensational poise. Was I attractive to the other fellows? To get any guy in town, all you'd have to do would be to just throw the switch. Any guy but you. Never in the history of Carvel has there been such a ball of fire. Andy, what's wrong with me? Not a thing. Except... Well, 
Melody, couldn't we... Couldn't we just not talk about it anymore? Andy, I, I have to... I have to know, Andy. I feel awful. Good night, Andrew. I walked in the door. No, please. What's your problem? Oh, me? Oh, I had a little trouble tonight with Melody Nesbitt. It's very apparent Melody likes you pretty well. Dad, I'm a healthy, normal fella. And here I can't fall in love with a girl that's just dripping with zip from every pore. It just doesn't make sense to me. Not Melody, a zip dripper. Melody. Love has changed her into a dream queen. A fever frow to every fella but me. Well, son, maybe you're growing up. Well, if that's growing up, I'm not so sure that I'm going to like it or not. Dad, she... she cried. And you're passing another milestone. It's always a shock to a man when he finds out for the first time that some girl... Well, some girl cried. You mean life is like that? Sometimes. And a man is helpless except to hurt. Tonight, Melody told me at the dance that she was happy about everything. That she is. You're just the stage that she's going through. Oh. You know, Harry Land is really in love with her, but he's too bashful to let her know. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm in a love triangle. Mm. Are you sure it's not a quadrangle? Are you positive that Polly Benedict's coming home tomorrow hasn't influenced your position? Yeah. Polly coming home tomorrow? Well, didn't you know it? Her father told me today. No. Polly couldn't influence my position. I'll admit that it knocked me for a goal when Polly Benedict left, but... I've outgrown her. In fact, I told her so in a letter. Well, that's too bad. Because Melody's too fine and honorable a girl to ever cut in if she thought that you and Polly Benedict were... Well, if you were... Going steady? Hmm. Say, hey, that's a swell way out. And you can say that again. You know, Andrew, you did a great deal for Melody. That's all right, Dad. You know, now that I've got Melody solid on Harry Land, I've been thinking. Mm -hmm. She's an awful swell girl. And I'm going to worry all the rest of my life whether I was glad I passed her up. Yeah. I was right. Women are habit for me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to several scenes from the motion picture, The Courtship of Andy Hardy, with Mickey Rooney, Louis Stone, and the Hardy family's guest player, Donna Reed. This is your Hollywood radio reporter saying thank you for listening. I wish we could hear the whole movie that way. That was a preview of The Courtship of Andy Hardy. And now one more episode of The Aldrich Family. This is from February 17th, 1949. The Aldrich Family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! And now for the Aldrich family. The phrase, never a dull moment, certainly describes a day in the life of a typical teenage American boy like Henry Aldrich. And it more than describes what happens to everyone who comes in contact with him. The scene opens in the Aldrich front hall. It is late afternoon. You! Anybody here? Hello, Arthur. Sam! What are you 
doing home? I finished early at the office. Where have you been, Alice? Why, out. Just out. Did you have a good time? Lovely. As soon as I take my hat off, dear, I'll make us a cup of tea. That'll be nice. Was, uh, was anyone with you? Where, dear? Out. No. No, I was all by myself. Oh. Not that I care where you went, Alice. Naturally, your time is your own, but you look a little funny. I do? Well, Sam... Yes? That is... Did you have an interesting day, dear? Fairly interesting. Oh, that's good. Did you? Oh, yes, I had the most... I'll go and make the tea. (laughs) Alice, where were you? Why... Sam, I wasn't going to tell you just yet, but I'm so excited. I've been to an auction sale. I hope you didn't buy anything. Now, dear, you know perfectly well I bought something. All right, let's have it. Well, well, they're sort of chairs. What kind of chairs? Why, they're the kind that they'd be just grand in a... Well, any place we put them. How many chairs? How many? Sam, they're genuine early American, and it sounded as though they went back to 1840. They went where? And they were awfully cheap, dear, and there's a good deal of wood on them. I know that. I see. But, dear, before you set your heart on them, they may not be chairs. What? Sam, I was way at the back of the hall, and there was a woman with a feather right in front of me. Yes? So I'm not quite sure what I bought. What? <laughs> but in the living room, Henry... Have you heard about the Browns? What Browns? The Homer Browns. Gee whiz, guess what happened to them? What, Henry? I don't know. (laughs) What? I just ran into Willie Marshall, and he said something practically unbelievable happened to them. And he didn't say what it was? He doesn't know either. But, boy, it's all over town, so somebody ought to know. I'm going to phone Agnes. Well, that's odd. I had lunch with Will Brown today, and he didn't mention anything. Well, whatever's happened to them must have... Oh, my goodness. Is that a truck pulling into our drive? It looks like it. Sam, that must be my chairs. Alice, walk. Don't run. Come and see them, dear. 117 Elm Street, Aldrich. That's right. Just set them right down here. Oh, my, aren't they beautiful. All right, Alice. What are they? Look, Sam, they are chairs. Ladder backs. Well, here are ladies sign here. Yes, of course. Thanks. So long. Goodbye, and thank you. Sam, look, five dining room chairs, genuine antiques. Aren't they beautiful? Grand. Just grand. Oh, I'm so glad you like them, dear. Oh, I do, I do. There's just one small point I'd like to bring up. Yes? We already have a set of dining room chairs. Now, isn't that just like a man? It is. Dear, there are all kinds of places we can use them. Such as? Such as, such as... And besides, Sam, these chairs are really a wonderful investment. Are they? Of course they are, dear. Antiques always have a high resale value, didn't you know? And you always said I don't have a good head for business. But, Alice, how... Come on, dear, let's go in the living room and take a look around. What for? Well, maybe there's something we can get rid of to make room for the chair. Now, Alice, we're not going to start throwing out my favorite furniture. No kidding, Agnes. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, well, goodbye, Agnes. She was the way Agnes understands. It's Homer's uncle who died. Oh, that's too bad. No, it isn't. He left a will or something. Agnes says she hears the Browns have inherited a couple of fortunes. Henry, aren't you being rather mercenary? I know, but... Well, gee whiz, do you realize what that means? Dear, you're entirely too excited. But, Mother, don't you agree it's pretty wonderful when your best friend suddenly becomes successful? I'll answer the phone. But Henry, I want you to go and comb your hair. Comb my hair? Just when Homer's fallen into some money... Hello? Hello, Sam. This is Will Brown. Well, I just heard the news. Which brother was it? What's that? Or was it your uncle? Whose uncle? Is this Sam Aldrich? Well, didn't you just come into some money? Well, yes, but... And I want you to know how sorry I am. Sam, what are you talking about? There's nothing new wrong with my brother. Oh, then what's the story that's going around town? How should I know? You tell me. Uh, never mind. Hey, look, Sam, why don't you and Alice join us for dinner at the mansion house tonight? The mansion house? On us, Sam, on us. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, that is provided I can reserve a table. <laughs> well, Alice and I can provide the chairs. <laughs> That's funny you should mention chairs, Sam. That's where we picked up some money today. Oh? Uh, Elizabeth unloaded an old set of chairs on some sucker at an auction sale. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Will, isn't that... Well, what was that again? The five old chairs, Sam, that we got stung on 15 years ago, and they've been kicking around in our attic ever since. Ah, uh, well... Some fellow told us they were genuine antiques. 
Uh, Will, what exactly do these chairs look like? Sort of early American ladder bank jobs with straw seats. And knobs all the way up the legs? <laughs> the ugliest things you ever saw. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd sure like to see the expression on the face of the poor guy that got them. Uh, well, I don't think we'll be able to make it for dinner tonight after all. No, why not? Uh, frankly, I suddenly don't have much of an appetite. <laughs> Henry, never mind making whirlpools with the cream. Just eat your cereal. Sure, Father, I'm eating it. Only, frankly, I'm a little worried about Mother. What about me? Ever since last night, you've been looking kind of sad. Henry, finish your breakfast. You'll be late for school. No, I won't, Mother. There's plenty of time before Homer gets here. Homer's coming over? Sure to call for me. Mother, look. Are you worried about something I've done? Of course not, Henry. Uh, Henry, will you uh, run upstairs and get me a handkerchief? Isn't that a handkerchief there in your coat pocket? Now, please get me another one. You want two handkerchiefs? I feel a cold coming on. But why? Now, please go! I, I don't want Henry to know a thing about those chairs. He doesn't, dear. And I don't want Homer to know about them, either. He'll trot straight back to Will with the news. Now, Sam... Don't you understand I'll never be able to look Will Brown in the eye again? Is that why you hid the chairs down in the coal bin? Yes. And I want you to get rid of them today, do you understand? But, Sam, how do you look at it this way? The longer you keep antiques, the more valuable they become. But, Alice, those chairs are not antiques. But, dear, they will be if we keep them long enough. Alice. Here's your handkerchief, Father, and some aspirin. Aspirin? What for? Gee whiz, you're cold. Here, I'll pour you a glass of water. Henry, I don't need any water. You mean you just swallow them straight? Hey, Henry. I'll be right there, Homer. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Henry, come back here. Well, what is it, Father? Henry, uh, naturally, if you're walking to school with Homer, you'll be talking to him. <laughs> sure. Well, then remember this. If he asks you any questions about the family, you know nothing. Absolutely nothing. About what? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> Father, is something wrong? No, of course not, Henry. But no matter what Homer asks you, just don't answer it. Hey, Henry, we're going to be late for school. I'm coming, Homer. Goodbye, everybody. Don't forget your books. I won't, Mother. Goodbye. Bye. Have a gun drop. Homer, are you asking me? Because if you are, I know nothing. About what? Never mind. Let's have a gun drop. Hey, you don't have to take the whole word. But look at the size bag you have. Boy, that's nothing. Wait till you see what I've got in my pocket. Yeah? Look, licorice, bubble gum, cigars. Cigars? Across the street. Cigars? Sure, they're solid chocolate. Boy, what happened? I thought my father said your uncle didn't die after all. He didn't, but we had a windfall just the same. This morning, my father called me in and said, Homer, how about stepping up your allowance this week? He did? I'll say. And listen, why don't you ask your father to do the same thing? Now, wait, Homer. What are you trying to pump me about? Pump you? How? I've noticed. I've noticed. All you've done is ask me questions. Why doesn't my father increase my allowance? Will I have a gumdrop? Shall we cross the street? Exactly what is it you're driving at? Are you crazy? See, that there's another question. Well, let me tell you, my folks told me to keep my mouth shut, and I'm going to. You mean it's that bad? Homer, if you'll change that from a question to a statement, I'll tell you. Otherwise, you'll just have to wonder. Okay, things at your house are pretty bad, aren't they? I mean, things are bad. Boy, they sure are. Do you know what I overheard my mother tell my father last night? She said she wouldn't ask him for one cent to run the house on for the next six weeks. Yeah? And she said she had a good head for business, too. Why'd she say a thing like that? Well, maybe she's going to help my father out. Gee, maybe I ought to find a way to help out, too. Henry, you're the very guy I want to talk to. How'd you like to go into business with me? What business? Look, I'm not asking you this. I'm telling you. Did you know there's a terrific demand for second-hand furniture and junk? Huh? Whatever you can dig up, somebody is darn fool enough to pay money for. Homer, since you're not asking me would I like to go into business with you, my answer is yes, I would. <laughs> If you'll just come with me, Mr. Smith. Uh-huh. The chairs are right here in the coal bin. There they are. Uh-huh. As you see, they're ladder backs. Uh-huh. And quite old, I believe. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> Mr. Smith, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I paid $25 for them. Well, you got a good buy. These are valuable chairs. What? Yes, ma'am. You don't say, wait until my husband hears that. He insists I have no business sense. Uh, where's the sixth chair? I only have five. Oh, too bad. If you had the set of six, I could pay you $65 for them. You would as much as that? If you had six. Oh, my goodness. Five are worthless. Worthless? To me, they are. Oh. Uh-huh. Now, wait. It just occurred to me, Mr. Smith, there's the slightest possibility I might be able to get the other one. Yes? The couple who used to own them might have it kicking a... That is, lying around. <laughs> Are you sure that auction sale is going on for two more days? Positive. Come on, haul the sack in here. Okay, but what's in your room you can sell? If we look around in corners and underneath things, we might find anything. Hey, I know. Where's your stuffed rattlesnake? Under the bed. Oh, you know what I was thinking of selling? What? The bed. Homer, you mean you'd auction off your own bed? Sure. My mother heard of one that brought $100 at yesterday's sale. No kidding. Of course, it was hand-carved. Yeah, but the only thing carved on your bed is your initials. <laughs> so what? Somebody might come along with the same initials and be crazy about it. But supposing you did get $100 for the darn thing, what would you sleep on? Who'd want to sleep? I know, but and you... besides, Henry, aren't we trying to raise money to help your folks? Yeah. Okay, then. After all they've done for me, the least I can do in return is sleep on the floor. Homer, my father will certainly appreciate it, Henry, but... Henry, who's that out in the hall? I don't see anyone. It was a woman of some kind. She was sort of tiptoeing along. All of a sudden, she slid into my mother's bedroom. You suppose it's a cleaning woman? Here she comes out again. Well, hello, boy. Oh, is that you? Your father and I dropped in for a little visit with the Browns. My, what a lovely room you have here, Homer. Well, my goodness. What's the matter, Mrs. Aldrich? Homer, that little stool with a straw seat over there in the corner, it looks like... Well, that's the seat part of an old chair we used to have. What? Mother, what's the matter? Homer, where's the rest of it? The back part. My father uses it for a pipe rack. You don't say, oh, my... Homer, I, I suppose you're quite attached to that lovely little stool? No. Gee whiz, I only use it to rest my foot on when I'm shining my shoes. Really? Sure. And I hardly ever do that. Oh, no. <laughs> that's wonderful. I wish my mother took that attitude. And the back of the chair is your father's pipe rack? Sure. Well, will you excuse me, boys? I'm going downstairs and speak to your father. Henry. Do you think your folks have lost their home and they're moving in here with us? <laughs> Gee whiz. Gee. Homer, are you putting that old stool in the bag? Sure. We're going to sell it at the auction. That darn thing? Why not? If it looked good to your mother, it might look good to somebody else. You're crazy. Now listen, Henry. Do you really want to help your folks or don't you? <laughs> Getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Alice and Sam Aldrich discovered that the five antique chairs she had bought at auction were worthless without the sixth, which they are now trying to get from the Browns. As a result, Henry and Homer believe Henry's parents are in financial difficulties. The scene opens at the Browns. It is a little later the same day. As I was saying, Will, I've certainly become attached to that pipe rack of yours. That darn thing. Yes, it sort of grows on you. Why, it was only five minutes ago I first laid eyes on it. <laughs> it took 15 years for it to grow on me. Is that right? I certainly wish it were mine. But, Sam, you smoke cigars, don't you? Oh, uh, I've suddenly taken up pipes. <laughs> well, you know, I thought pipes made you deathly sick. Uh, well, they used to, but not anymore, Will. Well, then, here. Let me make you a present. What? Here's a pipe I've never touched. My wife's brother sent it to me. I wouldn't smoke it with a ten-foot pole. But, well... It's yours, Sam. And here's some new tobacco I picked up. Yeah, I'll fill it up for you. Um, but you see, well... Sam, would I ever give you anything if I really wanted it? <laughs> yeah. I hope I haven't packed the tobacco in too tight. Oh. Here's a light. Thank you, Will. 
Thank you very much. Now, there's a smoke with authority, huh? It certainly is. The only thing is, now I really need a place to keep this pipe. What, Sam? I'll buy that pipe rack from you, Will. Well? Sam, did you... Will, what are you two so busy talking about? Why, we're simply... Sam, I never saw you smoke a pipe before. You didn't? Well, you're seeing me do it now. (laughs) Where have you been, Alice? Out in the kitchen with Elizabeth? No, I just went back upstairs to... Sam, do you feel well? Yes, I... I feel... Isn't it just a little close in here? No, you noticed it, too. Here, let me go open the front door for a minute. Sam, it's gone. What's gone? The stool up in Homer's room, the other half of that pipe rack. It is? Dear, don't you even care? Care? Sam, I'll tell you what. If you want that doggone pipe rack so much, I'll sell it to you. Yes, sir. Give me a $10 bill and we'll call it square. Sam? Sam? Sam, speak to me. for 25 cents to the boy with a lady in a sailor pants. Gee whiz. Now, if you just wait a minute while we get the next few items up on the flash. Boy, Henry, did you see that? 25 cents for my old left roller skate. Imagine, aren't people dumb? Oh, say, boy, they'll buy anything. And now we come to this very interesting item. Homer, it's your we stool. Have, have. The one my mother was so have. crazy about. We oh, have here, folks, a very valuable-looking, uh, well, it might make a fine milking stool. Or for shining shoes. Did I hear a bit of two? No, gee whiz, I just said... Homer, keep quiet. He didn't say two. Two I have. Who'll make it three? Oh, boy. Do I hear three dollars? Three is bid? Three is bid? Three is bid? Who'll make it three dollars? Sure, who'll make it three? You will? Fine. Three dollars I have. No. Three dollars I have. What are you doing? Three dollars I'm bid for this unique and fascinating little uh, item here. Three dollars is bid. I'm bid three dollars. Three dollars, who'll make it four? Henry, what'll I do? No one says four? Well, it looks as if the young man in the front row was in luck. Who, me? Going for three dollars? Henry, it's costing me three dollars. Going twice? It's my own stool. It's going for... Hey, what's the commotion back there? what's happening? Uh, Will the gentleman who just came in please find a seat? Perhaps he'd like to bid on this object. Yes. Henry, somebody wants to buy it. The bid stands at three dollars. Three fifty. Oh. I can't accept a fifty cent raise, sir. Why not? Uh, there's a young fella here in the front row who's very eager to have this stool. No, I'm not honest. Ten dollars. What? That's more like it. Sold for ten dollars to the gentleman without a seat in the rear. <laughs> See, you know, if if I didn't happen to know my father was having financial difficulties, I'd swear it sounded like him. Oh, excuse me. Could you help me right away, please? I want to have this chair. Uh, why, Gus. Afternoon, Mr. Aldrich. I thought this was the cabinet maker's. It is. But, Gus. I'm the new apprentice. Apprentice? Yeah. You know, they take on young fellows and teach them the trade. But, Gus, last week you were an exterminator. Yeah, I give it up. Is that so? Yeah. There I'd be, and there a poor little ant would be, and I'd give a whoosh. And there I'd be, and the little ant wouldn't be. <laughs> I, I give it up, Mr. Aldrich. I see. Went against my nature. Well, um, uh, Gus, you see this chair? Yeah. Is that what it is? Well, it used to be. Uh, now, can you take this stool for that, and... that reminds me of a chair I fixed once for my Aunt Hepzibah. What a wreck. It was? No, no, she was. <laughs> uh, Gus, look, the chair wasn't really damaged. Wasn't damaged? Oh, yes, it was. My Uncle Horace, he went clear through it. The back part was used for a pipe rack, you see. No, no, couldn't have been used for that. Because Aunt Hepzibah, she never smoked. What's that? At least way is not a pipe. Now, look, God. Although her mother, great aunt Jezebel, 96 she was, she wouldn't be caught without a corn cob. Now, wait a minute, Gus. Well, Sam, there go the chairs. Thank goodness. I hope I've seen the last of them. 
You look tired, dear. Alice, do you realize I went through three generations of Gus's families to get that chair glued together? Well, let's go in the living room and sit down and count my $65. Your $65? Naturally, dear. I'll give you the $25 I paid for the chairs in the first place. Thank you. And that leaves me a clear profit of $40. And, Sam, even you'll have to admit that's a very good business deal. Exactly how do you figure you cleared $40? That's simple arithmetic, dear. 25 from 65 is 40. Isn't it? Uh, Well, how about the $10 I paid Will for the pipe rack? Oh, that. And the $10 I paid at the auction for the stew. My goodness, you mean I owe you $20 more? Simple arithmetic, dear. Very well, here you are. That still leaves me a $20 profit. Did I mention it cost $12 to have that sixth chair repaired? $12? That leaves you eight. Well, $8 profit is $8 profit. How much did it cost you to have the chairs carted up here to the house? Why, not very much. Just $4.40. Ah. You mean all I have left is $3.60? I'm afraid so, Alice. Perhaps after this, you'll leave business to me. Sam, I have a clear profit of $3.60. And any business that doesn't operate in the red is a good business. Mother! Henry, where have you been? Handling a little business deal. Boy, did we clean up. You too? And Henry has something to say to you. No, Mother. Uh, Homer has something to say. It was his idea. Go ahead, you say it. You're a folks, Henry. You say it. No, you. Well... Go on, Homer. Don't be bashful. Well... You've always been pretty nice to me, Mrs. Aldrich. And, Mr. Aldrich, you've been nice to me, too, at times. And now that you've had some hard luck and we've had some good luck, we'd like to give you half of what we've made. Homer, what are you talking about? Mother, I caught on. You didn't think you could keep it from me, did you? Keep what from you, Henry? Mr. Aldrich, Henry and I aren't kids. We can read between the lines. Didn't we just see a whole load of your furniture being hauled away? Yes, dear. We sold it to Mr. Smith. That's what I mean. Gee, if you need money that bad... Here, take this. Five dollars and twelve cents. Half of what we took in. Homer, we won't do anything of the kind. But, Father, that's the way Homer wants it. That's why he sold a valuable stool right out of his bedroom. What? Sure. Dear, that's very generous of you. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome, Mrs. Aldrich. And I hope you don't have to sell any more of your stuff. Come on, Homer. But if you do, will you let us handle the deal for you? I think we could do a lot better than you could. Sam? And I thought I'd live to see everything. Sam? Now, Alice, don't cry. Dear, I never knew boys could be so wonderful. Think of it. Sharing what they made, 50-50. Yes. Dear... Under the circumstances, don't you think we should do exactly as much for them? You mean give them half of your profit? Half of just three sixty? Oh no, Sam, half of all the money we got for the chairs. But Alice, what about our expenses? Sam, did the boys deduct their expenses? Sometimes, dear, I think you don't know the first thing about business. <laughs> Listen again next week, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. I hope you enjoyed these great old shows. If you'd like to leave a comment, you can send me a message on Twitter at ThisDayBenny.